The facades of your kitchen drawers are possibly the most important parts of your kitchen drawers. They're the first things that anyone sees when they first step into your kitchen. So you want to make them pretty. So today we're going to learn everything there is to learn about building beautiful shaker style cabinet drawer facades. So stay tuned. Let's start by measuring out our face frames off an existing cabinet. We're going one and a half inch from the outside edge of the existing cabinet to the edge of the face frame on the top. We're going about one and a quarter inch from the top countertop to the face frame. The gaps between your face frames are important. We've got a one inch gap here between the first and second face frame. A little bit lower though, there's a little less of a gap. It's about seven eighths of an inch. To the eye, you're not gonna notice that, but realize that you may have slight differences in gaps between face frames. So just allow for that. So let's come over here to our new cabinet under construction. You can see I've got a shim there. That's for uh, allowing for a gap between the box drawer and the face frame. So we're gonna take a scrap piece of wood here and measure off uh, with overlaps in consideration from the countertop. You can see I've got a pencil mark measuring a little bit. I believe it's about a quarter of an inch overlap. And uh, we're gonna have a roughly about a half inch overlap on the sides and we want to make sure we've got that overlap measured correctly on the bottom as well we've got the pencil marks there using scrap pieces helps a lot with measuring your your overlaps and uh, your face frame widths that sort of thing and then what we'll do is we'll take a scrap piece of of wood in this case i've got some scrap plywood and i'm just going to use it kind of as a way to measure the top and bottom cross pieces so I can use this and hold the scrap piece of plywood in place between the top and bottom pieces and then measure exactly what length we need to go between those top and bottom pieces. In your case, your measurements are gonna be different because your drawer sizes are gonna be different. Now we've got the pieces cut, that is the vertical pieces, and I have slight height differences between the left piece and the right piece. That's to allow for the very slight differences in measurements um, on the left side of the top drawer to the right side of the top drawer. So allow for that. You're gonna have such very slight imperfections, but to the eye, as I mentioned before, that's not gonna be an issue. All right, so top and bottom side pieces are all cut. Let's take it for a dry run. Let's make sure everything is going to square up nicely and look good. So I've got my left side piece a little longer, right side piece a little shorter. And I'm gonna put them all together with the horizontal pieces and make sure that we've got a good looking frame before we assemble it. And as I put it together here, what I'm really looking for is the top piece. I'm gonna make sure that's got a nice, even straight line parallel to the bottom of the countertop because that's where your eye is going to be drawn to and that looks good so yeah we've got a nice straight gap there pull these out a little bit more just to make sure everything's good and now I can start assembling the face frame All right, so building face frames can be tricky. The key is to make your notch cuts consistent all the way around. And for my perimeter pieces, I'm making notch cuts that are about a quarter inch in from the side here. A little bit less width over on this side. This is about, eh, I wanna say an eighth of an inch, give or take. But I have a little more width for the piece, the perimeter piece that's going to be facing out away from the cabinet. I have these scrap pieces of wood from a previous face frame project. If you don't have these, you need to go in about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch deep 
and you just use a ruler to measure if you don't have a scrap piece but I have scrap pieces here so I'm using those to measure how high I want the blade to come up out of the table saw so I'm measuring those I'm setting the saw height at the right height and then I'm going to measure the width um, I need a certain width so that I can get that piece over to the left inserted into those notches all the way around we're using a piece of 1 8 inch solid maple for the center of the face face frames it's roughly two or three saw blade curves so what we're going to do is we're going to start a quarter inch out from the side of the face frame so we're going to make a notch cut then we're going to flip the piece around and then make another notch cut on the opposite side now if all goes well that's all we need to do but you may have to make a third notch cut just to get enough width so that your perimeter pieces fit around the center piece or in our case the solid maple piece that we're using as a centerpiece. And I'll spare you the saw noises here and just uh, make you well aware that you always want to use your safety gear when you're using your table saw. And for these types of notch cuts, you need to use two push pieces to run your lumber through the table saw. So I'm going to use a push piece on the side and one on the back and away we go. And this is the first notch and it's about a quarter inch in from the side of the perimeter piece. So I'll run that through and then I'm going to flip it around and cut another notch through after I finish the second piece. And if I measure it just right, we're going to get enough width to fit that center piece into the perimeter pieces. But again, sometimes you need to make a third cut just to give your self just a smidgen more width so if you're a production level or a master carpenter and you're doing this on a regular basis then yeah you need a dado set but i'm not i'm just a diy and i'm just building a handful of cabinets for our kitchen so i'm going to use existing table saw blades to make these notch cuts and that's when your table saw fence really comes in handy you can set it make your first notch cut set it again flip the piece of lumber around, make your second or third notch cuts. Measuring the centerpiece for your face frame or your face plate can be tricky. So the first thing you want to do is measure the width. So we've got our notches cut, we've got our vertical pieces in place, and we've got them fitted on either side of the centerpiece of our face plate. In this case, the 1 8 inch maple that I discussed earlier. So now that we've got the vertical pieces in place, we can measure exactly what we need the width to be. So we're going to take the top and bottom or horizontal pieces and decide the width. And we need an inch and a quarter removed from the width of this maple. So that's the first thing we're going to do is remove an inch and a quarter from the width. And now I'm marking a line for the bottom piece or for the bottom cut of this particular piece of maple. I'll determine the height by adding a half inch for the notches to the height of the vertical pieces. Okay, so we have the maple center piece cut to fit and now we're gonna put the perimeter pieces all the way around. So we're gonna use an ample supply of wood glue. These are the horizontal pieces, the top and bottom pieces. You can see I've got a lot of wood glue in the notches and we're gonna place those onto the maple centerpiece. There's another shot of the horizontal pieces. Lots of wood glue going on there to make sure that there's a lot of adhesion to the centerpiece. These are the vertical pieces, those shorter pieces right there. I've got my trigger clamps here on either side. I'm going to use those trigger clamps to hold everything in place overnight. Let that wood glue really set, really cure. Here's a shot of how I mount an entire face frame assembly to the front of a sliding drawer. I use four wood screws, one in each corner of the front of the drawer, mount them at an angle, and then drill at an angle into the perimeter of the face frame. The reason I do that is because the perimeter of the face frame doesn't completely line up exactly with where the wood rests at the front of the drawer. So you have to angle the wood screws like this. And I also use painter's tape to mount or actually test mount 
a face frame that's sitting under a face frame that's already been mounted. And you can see here in this shot, I actually used wood screws to go in through the front of the face frame to mount it in place. And then I used those angle screws in the back within the drawer to fix the face frame assembly in place. Once I did that, I pulled the screws out of the front, used a little vinyl spackling to cover up the holes, and there's no trace of screws or screw mounts in the front of the face frame. Okay, once your face frames are mounted, the last step is to put the drawer pulls on. So what you wanna do is measure the distance, the width, of the face frame interior and it's 22 inches in our case right here and I know that the distance between the outside edges of the of the bolts for the drawer pulls are seven inches apart you can see it right there seven inches edge to edge so we're gonna take 22 minus 7 equals 15 we're gonna split that 15 in two and we've got seven and a half inches from each side of the face frame interior. So we've got seven and a half inches going in from the left side to where the outside edge of the left bolt for the drawer pull is going to go. All right, now measuring from the top of the interior of the perimeter of the face frame, we've got a distance of roughly three and three quarter inches. So with those measurements in mind, I can now take the drawer pull and trace a little circle around where I'm going to mount the left side of the drawer pull. You can see it right there. And then I'm going to mark dead center in that circle, and that's where I'm going to drill for the left-hand side of the drawer pull. All right, so once the drawer pull is mounted, you want to snug it up so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room. You want to snug it up so that you know it stays in place, but you want to move it up and down on the other side, the right-hand side. And then what I'm going to do is use a level and exactly figure out where the level is going to be in, in the midst of the drawer pull, in the center of the drawer pull. So we've got it right there. That's pretty close. Move it up just a hair. All right, and then once we've got our drawer pull where we want it, we're gonna draw a circle around the other side. It's a little bit off here because I was going more for the eye than dead level, but you get the idea. So once we've got our trace for the right-hand side, we know where to drill the hole and then we can mount the drawer pull. So there's our completed face frames. They are a thing of beauty. Look at those. Obviously, they'll be a lot better looking when they're painted, but you want to mount the drawer pulls before you paint. Then you can remove the drawer pulls, paint, and put them back in place. And once the paint is complete, they will look wonderful. So I hope you liked this video. hope you learned a few things. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, and I will answer as best I can. If you did like this video, check out my other cabinet building videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.